Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all those who provided the vast array of amendments to this proposal. I, I will try and be swift on three points. The first is an observation about the reasons for having this particular uh, directive to be created, uh, and that seems to be that we are trying to deal with a market, as Mr. Hayes has said, which has involved one trillion euros uh, of financing that funds a, a variety of investors which are needed to essentially work the whole of the, the European economy and world economy that's connected with it. And we seem to be saying that we've had problems in the markets because of the financial crisis, and yet, as Mr. Hayes says, there was no such problem in this particular market in Europe. There were problems in the US. And so it seems to be that we are trying to find a solution to a problem that has not yet been resolved, and in creating this, we don't know what the law of unintended consequences will be. I note that Ms. Gill says that she is concerned that in this particular market there are participants, those who are providing the products and those who are investing the products, who seem to know each other rather well, and it's pretty incestuous, and therefore that in itself is a specific problem that we should be concerned about. That's rather rich coming from this place, where people can start here as stagiaires, work their way through as MEPs, sit on the desk in front of you, become commissioners, come back. If there's one place that's incestuous, this place has got to be the most. And therefore, do we need to regulate ourselves even more harshly because of that situation? The logic, therefore, does not fit simply because people know each other in an industry that they specialized in. And that is why they managed to create products that work for the particular consumers. Over the years, this market has developed. We've seen a development of CNAVs and VNAVs because of those very people who actually know exactly what the consumers want. And that is why they've worked out what the investment should be, what the pricing should be, what the liquidity level should be, because the market participants know. What we seem to be doing today in creating this is actually becoming very highly skilled technical product creators, i.e. if we sat in a bank or a fund, we'd be creating the product ourselves. Perhaps those who are creating this directive should leave and go into the banks themselves and try and earn a lot more money creating it, because that's exactly what we're doing here. And the problem is we do not have the skills in here to create those products for, them, for, for the markets. And as a consequence of that, when you look at the individual parts of this directive, you can see there are potentials for failure in the future. For example, one, argument, one area of large argument is that of the buffers. I note that we've got percentages that we have decided we have placed in. Now, clearly, there are being lobbyists on either side with each of the shadows, with each of the groups that suggested that this should be the buffer that works for them. That may well be the case. But ultimately, whenever you put a place in there, one party would lose, one party will gain. And I fear that in these circumstances, in particular, the smaller participants, those who have funds of only two or three billion, will actually be the ones who lose because the percentage that they earn will reduce their management fees. And I note we're quite concerned that within this paper, there is a suggestion that the managers take the bulk of the costs of this before the market participants. What that simply will do is drive out the smaller players and ensure that the larger players uh, re remain. And that moves in to a more political point. It is absolutely clear that there has been a political agenda here to drive out the market of CNAVs completely and enable VNAVs to, to reign supreme. As VNAVs are mainly a French product, this seems to be purely about ensuring that the French market sustains itself over those of other markets, including those in the United Kingdom. This can hardly be fair, but it's not unexpected. My final point is this, and I apologize, Mr. Chairman, because you heard this yesterday at lunch. There is an Aesop fable that talks about the scorpion and the frog. Who was sat, the scorpion was sat on a bank of the river, and he asked the frog to give him a lift on the other side of the river. The frog said, why would I do that? You will simply sting me and kill me. The scorpion said, no, on this occasion we both need to escape the rising waters. I will help you get across. The frog was accepting of this 
argument and allowed the scorpion to get on his back. As he got halfway across the river, the scorpion raised his talon, sunk it into the neck of the frog, injected his venom and killed the frog. As the frog was dying and turned over, he said, well, why did you do that? The scorpion simply said, I'm sorry, it's in my nature. The problem here, ladies and gentlemen, is that in trying to solve a problem which has created no issues during the financial crisis, with products that seem to work, that have been created by market participants over years, and simply for the need to do something, or be seen to do something, you may end up kill the market, as Mr. Kamal has said, and drive it out of Europe in a time that we need more liquidity, more products, and more investment to ensure that growth occurs across the whole of Europe.